Hello everyone and welcome to another one of my video diaries. Uh, today is January 8th, 2015, a new year. Um, well, maybe I did one already in the new year. Um, and this is volume 27. Um, and basically today I want to talk about how my writing is going and, and some of the reading I've been doing. Uh, primarily I want to discuss the fact that um, I have had a bit of time off uh, from my employment. Um, unfortunately it's unpaid time off but it is time off nonetheless and you know I've been working so much last term that uh, I had been unable to do a lot of writing and so this last little bit I wanted to catch up or at least do some uh, spend a lot of time writing and as these things the way these things go I generally find that <clears throat> um, you don't do as much writing as you'd like because you feel a lot of pressure to do writing and so you don't actually feel comfortable doing the writing and feel like you have to produce and that necessarily makes you feel uncomfortable while you're writing and so um, I actually didn't do as much as I wanted which is fine um, I did manage to write a piece that I really wanted to write um, and it's in probably the final stages of me like uh, fixing it up um, it's not very long. It's only about uh, 1,400 words. Um, but what it, in terms of what I'm, uh, my writing process and where I want to be with my writing, it's an interesting piece in that um, I want to do more kind of memoir pieces. And in particular, I want to do kind of funny memoir pieces. And I find I'm very challenged at being able to do humor. Um, I mean, sometimes I can write and I can write in ways that are funny, um, but I do it unconsciously and I find it very difficult to like be funny on demand, like sit down and go, okay, I'm going to be funny now. Um, so I actually was happy with this one because I was actually kind of trying to make it funny and hopefully I succeeded. I mean, I have to kind of... Uh, get some people to read it first before I make a judgment on whether it was actually funny or not. But one of the things that I did do that I thought was uh, was well was helpful for me um, was first of all I actually did it. I wrote the first draft in a way that um, was actually quite helpful for me in that I wrote it. Uh, I generally find that I can write emails in a funny way better than I can write um, you know when I sit down to write in say a word document I actually find myself you know you automatically start to become a little bit more serious when you're writing in a document because you're like oh this is no longer something that's personal or off the cuff it's something that's supposed to last or be meaningful and so I generally found that by starting it as an email and then starting to write, I could actually retain more of the tone that I wanted, which is something I'm going to consider doing more often, uh, like specifically trying to write in particular formats because they kind of encourage a less formal uh, way of writing. Um, I've also been doing some writing on my phone, um, which I probably, I stopped doing it. I probably get back, should, back, should get back to it. Uh, but that really helped. That helped me like at least get a launching point for the, the story that I wanted to tell. And uh, you know, I mean, it also makes you think about how you actually tell stories in real life, which is, you know, we tend to, sometimes if you're a bit too much of a bookish person like me, you, you write in a way that gets a little bit too far, far away from how people actually tell stories. And uh, this email structure enabled me to get back to that. Um, but the other thing was uh, a, a friend of mine had been reading Bossy Pants and uh, that friend finally returned Bossy Pants um, over, the, over the break. And I started basically looking at sections of Bossy Pants that I found funny and trying to figure out why I found them funny. 
And I think, you know, when you actually start to investigate comedy, it's all the things you already know about comedy, what makes things funny, you know, um, repetition, uh, contrast, um, you know, absurdity, things like that, where we obviously already know these things. But actually looking at it enabled me to start thinking about how I should be structuring um, the way that the way that I was writing comedy. Um, and it's funny too, because like I've looked at other books. I mean, this isn't, I've looked, this isn't the only funny book in the world, but I've looked at other funny books and uh, I actually struggled to learn anything from them. Like uh, someone like David Sedaris, uh, although I find him funny, I was looking back at the pieces that I found funny and I actually found it very difficult to learn anything from him because he was often his the stories themselves were often like his life was was ridiculous like he was kind of a a bizarre little child for instance uh who had a lot of strange tics and behaviors so actively learning from that isn't very helpful because what's helpful is looking at people's regular lives and seeing how they then portray it as uh, you know, humorous is, is, is helpful, and, and Tina Fey was great for that. So, um, as I said, I took some tips from the, from the book, and I uh, basically wrote something and then used some of the ideas from, uh, from, from what I learned to kind of make it funny. Once again, who knows if this is actually funny? I have to get someone to read it and then give me feedback on it and then, you know, improve it and all that. But overall, it felt very successful. Um, and uh, it felt better than, you know, just struggling and batting my head against a wall. And I think one of the key things that I learned um, was I think sometimes, like, my humor when I actually speak. And, you know, you probably haven't even watched these videos. You're like, oh, he's not very funny. But uh, when I am funny, uh, those few minor times, um, is usually, as I'm doing right now, is being self-deprecating. And uh, I think um, sometimes I was, I focused too much on the self-deprecation. And so sometimes it would get a little too, this is when I've done previous writing, it would get a little too harsh. And I struggled to figure out, okay, well, what is the right balance? What, how can you be self-deprecating and still be funny and not be like pathetic or like really just mean to yourself? And um, the one thing I kind of really did pick up from the Tina Fey book was that I think a large part of comedy is kind of realizing having a good understanding of who your audience is and then reading your work as if your audience is reading it. And then when you get to certain points, inverting their expectations or subverting their expectations. And so the key thing for me was, you know, it's not about being self-deprecating, like tearing yourself down. It's about it is about that whole process of looking at their expectations and flipping them. Um, uh, most often, I mean, there's other ways you can create humor, but that is one of the key ways. And um, that really helped me because I was like, oh, you know, I don't have to feel like I'm, if I'm writing about myself, like tear myself down, I can kind of, boost myself up or tear myself down the key thing is that it has to be kind of um, uh, uh, an inversion of, of expectations and I think it has to be joyful it has to be kind of delightful you have to um, sound like you're excited about relating your past and if you are constantly being negative and sounding like you're self-deprecating um, or at least uh, trashing yourself then you can get into a place where you're basically just it's becoming in no way comedic it's just becoming sad 
Um, so I'm not sure if that's terribly clear, but that's what I learned. And so uh, I thought it was really interesting and I'm going to move on further with it. I'm sure, of course, people have learned all of this uh, comedic stuff years before, and this is all very obvious to you, but it was new to me and uh, something that I found interesting. And uh, aside from that, I'm doing some reading. Um, I'm reading The 10th of December by George Saunders, uh, so a little bit old. Um, it came out in 2013, I guess, because it was one of the best books of 2013, about halfway through. It's uh, excellent. I've enjoyed him before. I think he's an amazing writer. Um, it's kind of depressing. Uh, his stories really capture kind of the feeling of hopelessness and failure that a lot of people have <laughs> in their lives, which you're like, oh, it's a little too true. Um, and I actually find that I'm like reading it really quickly. Like I'm, I don't normally, when I read, uh, like literary fiction, I usually don't read it that fast, but I'm reading it like super fast. Like I want to get to the end, um, which is exciting. Um, and like I said, just different. Um, he's very good at talking about class and that kind of class envy that develops. And as someone um, who did not grow up in an upper middle class background and who does sometimes feel some class envy, um, he really does capture it really well. Um, and there was something else I wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, it's just, it's uh, very good. Um, oh yeah, the other key thing that I'm kind of going to take away from my writing is some of his stories, you know, one of my problems that I work on all the time is that my stories tend to be too long. Um, I find to get out even like a good arc in a story, it takes like forever. And I'm, I think I've told you I'm working on a story that's right now it's around 6,000 words and I'm afraid it's going to go up to 10,000 words. And, um, uh, you know, and, and when I try to write something shorter, I find I just, there's nothing there. I'm just not even getting anything. And what I found interesting was that a couple of his most successful stories are fairly short. Um, and they really, like if you were going to describe what happens in the story, it's literally a sentence. Like in one story, it's um, a woman goes to buy a dog from someone she read on the internet or uh, newspaper or something. Uh, and she decides not to buy the dog because the woman's house is, the woman is clearly too poor, or the woman is clearly poor and her house is in disarray. That's the entire story. Like nothing else really happens in that story. Oh yes, something else happens, but I'm not gonna reveal it. But that's essentially it. And, um, but because he kind of relates all this backstory with these characters, you don't feel it's too short or too empty, uh, but you just have that one little turn. That's it. She goes to buy it. She decides not to buy it. Please. And, um, you know, and I think that's a struggle that I'm trying to get to where I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to a point where I can just focus find that interesting turn, turn it into a story, and then that be the story, and then I can have a story that's, you know, 2,500 words or whatever. Um, so, yes, that's something I'm thinking about. Um, I'm also reading uh, Karsik. I love John Waters. I think he's a hero. I'm not that excited about this book as I'm reading it, mainly because... It's divided up into three sections. I didn't know about this until after I bought it. It's divided up into three sections. And the book is about his hitchhike across America. You know, he's doing it as an old man um, when he used to do it all the time in the 60s and 70s. And, you know, it's just really not even possible to hitchhike. And as he says, 
you know, back in the 60s, you used to hitchhike to school. People used to actually just, that was the way they got home. Um, and now it's just considered uh, disreputable to hitchhike. And so, you know, that's kind of the funny idea behind this book. Oh, this older man is hitchhiking. Um, but it's the book is divided into three parts. The first part is he describes his trip um, imagining the best way it could happen. And then the second one is the worst way it could have happened. And then the third part is how it actually happened. And to be honest, I don't really care about the best and worst way it could have happened. I just want to know how it happened. Like, I, I'm reading the first section and I'm just struggling to care. Like, I don't... I don't even understand why I would care. I just don't. I, I don't know. Maybe I should read more of it. He is an excellent artist, and I really like him, and I love his voice, and whatever, blah, 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 and all that. But I, I don't know. I don't know why I should care. Anyway, that's the way it is. So um, I'm going to continue with those. The only other major thing that I'm working on right now is I'm working on some resolutions for the new year and although I think that all resolutions are in some ways a little bit ridiculous I think that it is important to look back at the things that you feel you haven't done well in the previous year and then perhaps try to figure out ways to improve or deal with those feelings of uh, failure um, I for instance have uh, I wanted to have a few things published last year, um, and I didn't, and uh, it's disappointing to me, and I have to kind of deal with those di feelings of disappointment somehow. I can't just pretend that they don't exist or that they're not there. I have to kind of say, okay, you felt them, you know, kind of, uh, you know, forgive yourself for, for not necessarily doing as best as you could have, and then move on and figure out a way to move forward. So I'm going to be working on that as well. So, and I mean, you know, as I said, resolutions are ridiculous, but I am going to try to do um, a diary once a week. Once again, it's all for me, for me to really think about um, what I'm doing as a writer. And I really do feel like, you know, I've looked back at all the subjects that I've discussed in the previous year, and I kind of wrote a, in my notebook about everything I'd kind of talked about and thought about. And I was like, oh, there's actually a lot of interesting ideas that I've thought about over the year. And, um, you know, doing these diaries, these video diaries have really forced me to articulate them and not just let them wash over me and get swept into the past. So I'm going to keep doing it. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. In any case, I'll probably, hopefully, see you next week. If not, have a good week.